everyone welcome to connected another opportunity to connect with me and to connect with a new guest and learn about a new topic i am talking to you all the way from santa cruz bolivia in south america remind you that you don't only see us through the abby ayala channel but also through facebook twitter and our channel on youtube the practice of traveling and get in the habit of knowing people and their stories, today we cherish the courage and determination of Monica Gonzalez's career. She is a young woman that has left Bolivia 10 years ago. Her path to become an international teacher was long and required a lot of hard work. Today, she literally lives on the other side of the world, in Shanghai, China, and works as a Spanish and French teacher at a local school. Before we get to talk to her, let's meet Monica. Born and raised in La Paz, Bolivia, Monica decided to leave her mother country 12 years ago. On her journey, she has lived in the US, India, China, and has traveled extensively. She is a global language international teacher, which gives her the opportunity of not only travel to new places, but to spend time enough to absorb the culture and the ways of living in each country. Monica is also a yoga certified teacher, a Reiki practitioner, a dancer, a daughter, an auntie, and above all, a human being. It is my pleasure to introduce Monica Gonzalez, who is talking to us all the way from Shanghai, China. Monica, such a pleasure to have you on the show. I want to start already with the questions because I really want to hear your stories. So please tell us, how did you incline on this path of teaching and traveling? Well, it's all about choices, choices, choices. So it's a kind of a beautiful story because I was in Bolivia studying English for a long time and I just didn't really know whether I knew it or not. So I decided to take a exchange student and adventure to the US. And that's where I truly found um, and discovered the passion for teaching. Although I was teaching dance and I was teaching literacy in Spanish, but um, definitely has been a you know, a change of journey when I um, went to the States and I became a teacher and not seven years later that I discovered the international teaching. So it has been a journey of dreams and making choices, I guess, along the way. Right. So tell us, how long ago have you left Bolivia? Ooh. Um, so that was... a long time back i think over 10 years right so a little more than 10 years okay so then your first step was moving from bolivia to the us and then you reached india what are the aspects that you most enjoyed and which are the aspects that you didn't enjoy at all having your life working and living in india india has been a really um healing, wonderful experience. I don't know if there is something that I can say that I did not like. It's just, I'm going to put it in perspective. It's not whether you like it or not. Sometimes the most challenging experiences, the ones that take you out of your comfort zone are the ones that are the most worth it in terms of growth, in terms of um, really um, discovering oneself. And for me, India has been, um, just a discovery of a world that is beyond what I expected and also I think if I want to think of like not something that I didn't like but something very uncomfortable and shocking and maybe you know sad even like India has been for me a reality and uh, where I realized how privileged I was to be working with the students and then realizing the 
poverty and the levels of like um, poverty that there are there, but like it's just so different and people are happy and, and content and it just teaches you a lot to be grateful, to be, to acknowledge for the things that, um, you know, for the little or a lot that you might have. So it has been, um, India has been that path for me and discovery oneself. I had wonderful experiences there. I became a yoga certified teacher there in the Himalayas. I became vegetarian. So a lot of new changes, new embracing new life. And tell us a little bit, like, I want to feel like, how is the day by day? Let's say in your life in Bolivia, of course you had a, um, a rhythm and you had like certain, uh, not rituals, but cert certain habits that you maintain. So when you move to India, which is a completely different culture and people there have different habits and stuff like that. So when it comes to that, which are the things that you kind of had to learn in order to, you know, be proper or to be respectful, they are very different with Bolivia. Yeah, no, most definitely. So the first thing that I think was different, it was like the amount of life that happened. Everything started super early. So I started waking up at 5 a.m. and I was not the only one. Everything starts super early. Like life starts at four before dawn and and just people are walking and it's very lively. And I had the pleasure to live really near to the uh, ocean and, you know, like the the waves and, and the, the the temples and the singing and the incense and, and the flower guy and the coconut water screaming in the streets. And it's just very lively. And so waking up early, understanding, you know, that life is just, a very beautiful cycle. Um, definitely something that was different also is like uh, the dressing. Actually, it's casual or a coincidence, but I'm actually in an Indian outfit. And um, I kind of had to be mindful of that. And um, because people are very traditional, very, very conservative, right. and it's very, very washed, but you can Ironically, you can uh, not show the shoulders or not show the legs, but you can show your belly, <laughs> which is completely opposite from us. It's like a what? So you have to cover some parts of the body, but not your belly. Um, then um, learned a little bit about the traditional uh, clothing, like wearing saris and how to tie it, and the meaning of like understanding one of the things that uh, really was really interesting it was understanding love and understanding um, arranged marriage. That was fascinating. So the first wedding that I went to uh, for my friend who seemed like very young, very, very, you know, well, not seen, like a very young man who like from a high caste, I would say, or like high status right uh, economically and he still didn't pursue love love uh, marriage but he did choose to have the arranged marriage and it was like fascinating for me it's like why wouldn't you pursue love <laughs> and he's like well it's part of the culture it's the easiest way to do it and it's like are you doing it because it's easy or are you doing it because like you truly believe in it and it was just a lot of like, I had a lot of questions and I had a lot of like, um, maybe not judgment, but that's what I learned, you know, not to right. judge, but just to, to ask questions and to kind of try to understand and step out of your shoes. It's like, oh, why wouldn't anybody like want to just have like their parents choose their husbands? Right. And uh, to me it was like kind of weird and completely out of, Line. Almost never... shocking, you can say. Almost like one step from being shocked just to hear something like that. And Moni, tell me about how it was like to kind of arrive in the airport and you see all of the writing and people talking completely different. And like, did you know any Hindu before you went there, or how was that experience? So, so I was living in Chennai, in the south 
India, and uh, what it used to be called Madras. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, huge city. Uh, they don't speak Hindi, they speak Tamil. Tamil is one of the languages that um, is the oldest, most ancient um, language that continues to be spoken, uh, so derived from Sanskrit. And it is really, really hard. But in India, actually, it was a little bit easier <laughs> because people do speak a lot of English. Okay. So that was easier, okay. of course, with an accent. So there is a, a like different words and different sayings and, you know, the little wobble of the head. And it's like, is that yes or no? <laughs> and he's like, oh, is that yes or no? And then, um, you know, three months into, I'm realizing I'm doing the same action imitating and assimilating the new culture and um, so more than the language it's just uh, assimilating in the culture and understanding you know what does that mean you know right. it doesn't mean yes or no okay it means everything it means acknowledgement it means yes I hear you it means yes it means no <laughs> and it's just so beautiful to uh, kind of come into peace and understanding of the little nuances of culture, more than the language. I think the language was harder here in China. <laughs> right. It is and Moni, so tell us, um, in India, how long did you stay there? So I, I stayed for three years. For mm -hmm. three years, because to me it's interesting, because it's different to actually go on a vacation and to have the experience of traveling around, you know, like maybe a week, two weeks, maybe three, but after three years, it's so interesting to me because you didn't only have to learn, but I'm sure you you enjoyed it. And I'm sure you still maintain some of the things that you learn and probably some of the habits. And how was the change going from Chennai to Shanghai, China? Tell us about that place. It is very, very, very different. Uh, India even though it's a huge in population, it's still a very down to earth, uh, very, um, you know, people, people are very warm, people are very, it's, it's still a big city, but like um, with, within communities. And Shanghai is a humongous metropolis and <laughs> it's huge and modern and very, very flashy and, even more expensive than Paris, I would say, which I did not expect. Um, we have like this contrast between like having things still socialized. So you, I cannot access Facebook. I cannot access uh, Twitter or any social media because it's blocked unless you have a VPN. Like right now, we're communicating through VPN. But um, tell us a little bit. What does that mean exactly? What happens there? It's um, it's a still very controlled. You can't say what you want to say necessarily. You have to be mindful of the political expressions that you might have. Right. It's very controlled by government. So, um, it's not good or bad. It is what it is. Right. But they have like even a, a social system where, just like in the U.S., uh, take your credit card like in your credit uh, mm, points. Like if you pay your debts, you get a better credit score. Right. Here is like you have social points. <laughs> if you cross, you know, if you make lines and if you cross through the crosswalk and to, you know, just uh, you're a good citizenship, you know, like, and so it's slightly different. And uh, yeah, it's very, very modern. There is like uh, this WeChat in the, all the, there's no money. It, I, it's been a long time. I have not used money. I use WeChat, and then I have these, and then they scan, and it's my wallet, and that's my money. And here we go, and people scan, and like it's just so easy. Oh my God! Okay, and wait a second. Wait a second. I have one question before we go to this money. So please explain to us a little bit about that uh, code of you being a good citizen. What are the benefits there? Well, um, then you can purchase cars, you can have you can have credit for house, but the reality is it's a, it's a millions and billions of population here. And so it is a 
super um, because there are so many people. I believe that they have to find a way to um, to honor and to control. And so it's just uh, another way to educate people. Also, I think the government has right. uh, put in place to to reinforce the laws and norms and. Basically, in order to get a help, financial help from banks and bank economical institutions, you don't only have to have money and pay your bills, but you also have to have education and manners and be like participate in society as a good citizen. Is that the whole idea? Yeah, a little bit like that. Yes, That's they are. Interesting. They are keeping track. They are camps everywhere. Yeah, there are cameras everywhere. They're like we said, you're not going there just for a travel. You work there, you live there, you have your life. So I'm sure it's a big thing to adjust to it. Monique, I'm loving these stories. We are going to go to a fast cut and we'll be right back with the last question for you. People at home, don't go anywhere. Stay connected. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you for remaining connected. We are still connected with Monica Gonzalez, who is all the way in Shanghai, China. And Moni, I want to ask you, uh, well, unfortunately, it's the last question, but I really want to know if for the people that are young and also would like to have this experience and also has the call to know cultures and to know languages. I would say first, um, Stop worrying about things, but uh, create experiences. And so what that means is like, I always thought that traveling was expensive and that I couldn't afford it. But the reality is when you put your hand to it and you put a priority, it's possible. And the other thing I, for me, has expanded is you know, learn, learning a language and being able to to dream, you know, and take the first step. I always like traveling has been always my 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 dream, but I also didn't know how to begin. I didn't know how where to begin, and so the first thing I I could advise, you know, for young people is like just just take it one step at a time, one day at a time, working towards the goals rather than saying. Oh, that's a, too big of a goal and I'm never going to get there or like a, just dream, 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 but not do anything about it. So I think every day is an opportunity to just uh, do a little something that will get you closer to, to your dream, to your goal, to whatever that is, um, you know, for me has been has been exploring the world and and. I never would have expected or I never would have anticipated that I was going to be an international teacher um, living in the countries and really getting deeper into the, the culture. But I feel like uh, all along the choices that I have made have helped me to kind of find that path. And so I just, you know, if I have anything to say is like never underestimate the beauty of your dreams. Uh, take one step at a time and just kind of be be proactive. Yeah. Monica, thank you so much for the time you spent with us today. I love to hear your stories and I really wish you well and I hope you continue to travel. I'm going to leave you a little space so you can say hello to the audience. Um, so thank you so much for having me in the program. It has been really a wonderful time to an opportunity to be sharing with you and with the audience and the only thing i want to say is just never stop dreaming dream big and take one step at a time thank you money always be well and i hope you continue Adios. traveling around Mwah. until next time with me goodbye Adios. After listening to Monica and all of her experiences, I just would like to say and to enforce the idea that if you like new cultures, new languages, that you feel that in your heart that you like to go out there and get to know everything, just do it. Step number one, we have and the one I always say, the powerful tool, which is the internet. So nowadays, 
If you don't ha wanna take a vacation and spend some little time somewhere, but you really wanna do, like have the experience to dip into a culture for real, go there and look for jobs or look for a way to go and study some something somewhere, anywhere in the world. That will definitely open the doors for you to have the biggest experience of your life. I will see you again in seven days. If you like to nominate anybody to be on the show, I'll be glad to interview them. Just write me to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be glad to connect with you. It'll be until next time with me. Goodbye.